his foundation as we begin this conference on the foundation that Jesus died, he rose again. That's where everything hinges. That he's not dead in some tomb like Krishna, Buddha, Muhammad. But our Savior is alive and he sits enthroned in the heavens. Above all powers.
happening here is that we are setting an altar unto the Lord. And the patterns are the intercessors came to, and the incense and the prayers mixed and already the Lord is here. And then came the shofar. The sound was released into the earth that Zambia must re now realize that the courts are in session. The courts of heaven are in session. And the next is you cannot have the presence of God filling the temple, minus the musicians and the singers. So we are very critical here. We are still setting an altar. Before we all sit down and before I get into all the protocols, because we are still setting the altar, I would like uh, our mother, Reverend Deborah, to bring that soil that was commanded upon yesterday. We spoke to Zambia. And I want us to, I'll read quickly from Jeremiah, and before I call upon uh, the servants, because we need to set this altar. The altar, after it's set, the priests will come and minister to it. And day by day, we'll have priests. Starting from today, the priests will come in the, in the four, five, uh, five fold ministry to come and minister. They will not minister well unless we set this altar right. Hallelujah. So we. So, we are speak, so for some of you, this is not witchcraft. This is from scripture. I'm a watchman. And I thank God that Apostle Sunday Sinyangwe is here. He understands these things. Hallelujah. <laughs> uh, Bishop Collins, you know this. This is our bread and butter. Hallelujah. Uh, Jeremiah chapter 22, 
verse 23, a prophet was sent to go and uh, rebuke and bring a judgment upon the king called Coniah. But he did not speak to the king. He had to address nature. You command nature. So he spoke and he says, O earth, 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 hear the word of the Lord. I will not go further. And he says, this, that says the Lord, write ye this man childless. A man shall not prosper in his days, for no man of his seed shall prosper, sitting upon the throne of David and ruling in Judah. Now what this means is that he was telling the earth to keep a record over any descendant of Konea. I will not go further. So we're going to speak to Zambia and the rest of the earth. If you're coming from the US, you're coming from Zimbabwe, you're coming from uh, Nigeria, the earth will hear. Because the courts in heaven are in Zambia. Can we give the Lord a clap of that the, earth, the courts of, Zamb of heaven are in Zambia. And because the woman of God has been one of the key people I've known who have birthed initiatives, including the Zambia shall be saved initiative. They are silent but powerful. So when I saw her, I say Zambia is safe. So you're going to pray this prayer after me because it's, uh, we can't give you all the source. I'll use this as a proxy. Amen. Heavenly Father, I think we can do better than that. Heavenly Father, I come before you as your regent on earth, as your judicial authority on earth. Oh, Zambia, 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 and the rest of the world, Hear the word of the Lord. According to Leviticus chapter 18, verse 28, those that defile you, you vomit them out. Today, we set you free from every defilement. Number one, idolatry. Number two, broken covenants. Number three, immorality. Number four, unnecessary shedding of blood. Today we invoke the blood of Jesus to set you free from these defilements. And we command you to be healed in the name of Jesus. From today, according to Jeremiah chapter 4 verse 28, chapter 4 verse 28, you shall no longer mourn. You shall no longer lament. Today we, bring, we give you back your joy. For the gods of heaven are upon you. Receive your redemption. In the name of Jesus. Continue to keep covenant. And relate to me by covenant. That you have with our Father in heaven. The mystery that is in Leviticus chapter 25. That talks about the covenant you have with my Father in heaven. So, O oh Zambia, you shall relate to me by the covenant you have with my Father in heaven. You shall bless me. You shall yield your strength to me. You shall give me the fatness of the earth. You shall give me the treasures of the earth, the precious things from the deep are all mine. As the land has been pegged, I now receive my inheritance. O earth, O earth, 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 hear the word of the Lord. You now become the land that the Lord has blessed. And may everybody say amen. Hallelujah. You can keep it here. Yeah, you can keep it here. Yeah, thank you. Hallelujah. It's my pleasure and privilege um, to call upon uh, Dr. Francis Miles to come and uh, officially welcome us. Amen. Shall we give the Lord a clap offering for the servant of God? And Pastor Cam Camela Miles. Let's give the Lord another clap offering. Hallelujah.
Hallelujah, somebody. Ah, uh, no, that's a weak hallelujah. I said, Hallelujah, somebody. Hallelujah. Wow. Well, I tell you, I'm so excited to be back in my homeland. You know, the, uh, I know the Bible does say that a prophet is honored everywhere except in his hometown. But I declare that it will be different for me in Zambia. Hallelujah. Because I want my country to receive what nations are receiving all over the world. But God taught me about, there was a season of five years when I was coming to Zimbabwe alone. Every time I would come to Zimbabwe, I would come back. Come to Zimbabwe, I would come back. And then now, the Zimb now, now the Zimbabweans are crying. Dr. Miles, when are you coming back to Zimbabwe? But God told me, he said to me, it's time now to invest yourself in the country of your birth. So, it's exciting for my wife to have been here last year, to do courts of heaven, to do it again. This year, we are very, very excited. I have relationships that, you know, I'm going to acknowledge uh, briefly because they are very important to me that I hear, you know, fathers of this nation, apostles in this country who love me and they welcomed me in the nation in an amazing way. But before I do that, I want my wife to say something that I'm going to close this out, close us out, and then I'm going to pray a prayer, an official prayer just to really let this thing go on. I tell you tonight, you'll be thankful to God that you came. Because what you are going to hear, what you are going to hear, you walk out of this place telling your friends you should have been there. Because there are moments of Kairos you cannot recreate. There are windows when they are open in the realm of the spirit, you cannot recreate them. You can try to tell it. It's like Peter and, uh, uh, and James and, and John trying to describe the transfiguration to the other nine. Maybe they try, but my friend, there is nothing like having been there and saw Jesus outshine the sun in your face. See Moses and Elijah come and confirm the Messiah. Peter was so affected by this, he said, Brethren, when we came to you, we did not come with cleverly devised fables. We were there with him on the holy mountain when the majestic glory appeared. Tonight, I'm, I'm telling you, it's going to be a very powerful day. But the whole weekend is going to be supernatural. It's going to be powerful. I'll be telling you who's coming through the weekend. I'm so excited about what's going to happen. But I want my wife to say something, then I'm going to wrap it up with honoring a couple of people. And then I'm going to pray a prayer. And then there's a two days, it's going to be two worship songs that are just going to blow your mind before we have our first speaker for the night. Thank you so much. It's been an honor and a privilege to be here in front of you. To be back in Zambia. It's a nation that is after God's heart. I, I believe the power of God is allowing me to show my emotion because it's truly my heart for this nation. It is my heart for this nation to come to the place of where God has called you to be. That your book of destiny must be open and it will come forth. That you will be a true first nation. That Africa will be first again. That Africa will come to the place where people will come to you like the queen of Sheba comes to Solomon to gain the wisdom because the wisdom of God will be upon this nation and the queen of Sheba of this nation will come to you to learn from you because the Lord has told me that the renaissance will be here renaissance creative solutions creative ways of doing business that people will come to learn from you that like the queen of Sheba when she met Solomon she gave she gave her an offering. She gave everything she came to a king. But when she left, 
She get, they ha, she got more than when she came from. May these kings of nations come to your nation and have more than when they came from in the mighty name of Jesus. Nalik, nalik, nalik temwa. Let's say that. Nalik temwa, Zambia sana. Naliko temwa, I love you all. And I really love this nation and it's my heart to see every one of you come to your place of destiny. Each and every one of you, that every potential that is hidden inside of you will come out. That by the time the Lord calls you, you are empty in the mighty name of Jesus. I may know I married well. Come on somebody, amen. Come on, don't be jealous. Give the Lord a clap offering for what I got. Come on, somebody. Amen. When I was on Sidroth releasing the book, Issuing Divine Restraining Orders from the Courts of Heaven, I became aware through my office that an email had come from a man of God in Zambia that wanted me to go and speak for him. I said, I said let me see you. Because... We receive, when you are a global ministry, you receive thousands of emails. So you, I don't get to see many of them, but I pray over everybody. But from time, divine sovereignty takes over. And I saw the email, and it says, Pastor Moses Chiluba. And I said to myself, ah, that name sounds, I said, there's only one, said, I, you know, when I found out it was the man I was thinking about, I said to my office, that's a father in our nation. If he summons me, I'm going back. And he sent me an email, and lo and behold, we connected. And the first time I ever taught on the court of heaven, it was on the platform of Healing Word. I want to, you to help me honor my covenant brother and sister, Pastor Moses and Victoria Chiluba. And then there's something that the man of God told me and the woman of God, they said it to me and Camilla. And I want to be God be my witness. I was almost in tears because the spirit they received me in and the way and what they place they made to me was my cry for Zambia. Because I preached in major churches in Nigeria. And there was one thing about Nigerians. Pastors in Nigerians are not afraid of each other. You know, in, in Zambia it's different. But I believe it's going to change. But Pastor Chiruba looked me in the face and he said to me, I want to give you my word. He said... We are tired of Zambians lifting foreigners while we reject our own that God has raised. He said to me, and I know him, and I know the men of God around the world, white, black, that you'll see on TV, that he has hosted over the years. And he told me, I'm tired of hosting these men and women. We appreciate them. But I told God, when are we going to lift one of your own that obviously God has shown us he has lifted him in the West. And he says, my wife and I, we are making a covenant with you. We'll do whatever it takes, come, everything we've got to lift, to make sure Zambia knows we have a Zambian God is using in America. And I want to tell you the truth. He has gone beyond the promise. But you know I said it too. I'm telling you, you know, it blessed me. It blessed me so much. I am not more in Zambia now by our own people because I've been in diaspora for so long. Because of Kamnet and what you've done, Abamayo, I honor you. And uh, thank you for being here tonight. One more time, people, help me thank my friends, the Chalubas. And then I got a call from a prophet friend of mine that I respect, who is my personal prophet. If he tells me anything, if he tells me God says jump over the wall, there will be a breakthrough. I'll do it. There's only one man like that. He's in America. And he called me. He said to me, there is an, there is a, this is the word he used. There is a young principality 
Girls is raising in Zambia, you must meet. I said, who is that one? He said, Apostle Sunday Sinyang. He said, whatever you do. And sure enough, he said, actually, let me get, literally put me on a three-way. An apostle has been the same. He comes to sessions where he's not even speaking, and you know how busy that man is. He's here, not because he's speaking today, because he told me, I cannot let you come to Zambia and you're not supported. What is that? Apostle Zandi, I honor you. Man of God, I honor you. So when he comes to America, I'm telling you, we talk, you know, I'm there for him. I just love you and I appreciate you. Thank you for being here, sir. You, I, I honor you. One more time, come for Apostle Sanders Nyangwa, my dear brother and my friend. Amen. You know, I'll be thanking people as we're going, but I want to thank God even for my MC, Bishop Mumbi. Thank you for what you have been doing, Bishop Mumbi. Thank you. My chairman for the conference, Pastor Jeffrey Muzwimbi from Zimbabwe. You know, my life partner for uh, in destiny. Man of God, I honor you. He is the one God used to open Zimbabwe for Francis Miles. And uh, when I met Bishop Tudor Bismarck, he's like, Francis, something is wrong with you. What? you. You must be crazy. I said, what Bishop? He said, everywhere I go in Zimbabwe, I meet Francis Miles. Do you live in Harare? Do you live in Bulawayo? You know, he was, he was just joking with me. It was because of that invitation. And, we, and with him, next to him, are people from, who flew in from Zimbabwe. So let's welcome the Zimbabwean pastors who have come from Zimbabwe. Amen. And then, of course, we've got my dear covenant brother for 25 years, Bishop Collins Muleya and Mama Muleya. Come on, stand up so people can... Amen. We used to... Bishop Collins and I... I can remember fighting mosquitoes in Kitwe on overnight prayer meetings. But look where God has, how God has turned those mosquitoes in the mountain into global grace to touch the world. I appreciate you and I honor you, my brother. Amen. Apostle Nkonde, I honor you. Amen. Apostle Lamar uh, with Dr. Kore, I think he just left, but he'll be here tomorrow and, and Friday uh, the whole day. Then, of course, I can't forget my spiritual sons and daughters who have come powerful it's an honor when you, when a man like me comes from out of africa then i end up with the sons and daughters in the united states who honor me as a matter of fact i mean i mean these people are here you mess with francis mouse they'll kill you i'm telling you i want to i mean apostle uh apostle uh, lee robertson wave your hand from all the way from jacksonville florida I'm telling you, you know, I call him T.D. Jakes with miracles because he can preach like that and then Lily's power like nobody's business. And he's the first one to open it up tonight. I, I did it deliver. I set you up. I set you up through the Holy Spirit. My daughter, Apostle Denise Walker, all the way from Macon, Georgia. Uh, when you hear her, my God, you, you forget about those chairs. You'll just be standing. She's got quite a word and she can prophesy like nobody's business. And uh, I just love you. I just ordained her and her husband, Apostle Cowton. Cowton, wave your hand, Apostle Cowton. They have a great church. They have several churches. They have many headquarters in Macon, Georgia. But I think they have got several branches all over the United States. They have planted quite a number of churches. So they, they actually, they actually, you know, that's why they are presiding over that entire network. They have a Bible college in the USA, but they are so happy to be in Zambia. We honor you, and Zambia welcomes you all. Amen? Come on, let's them know Zambia welcomes them. Amen? Praise the Lord. So I thank God for what, what he's doing. So I want to just to raise our hands so we can pray. I'm just going to pray prayer. And then, Brother Prince, I want you to, uh, I want a song from you and Claudia before we, Bishop Mumbi brings up our speaker. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Doesn't their press team look amazing? Come on, let's just, just give them, give them some love. Don't they look amazing? Give them some love. Amen. Hallelujah. Tomorrow, we're going to have the honor. We are not going to tell you for security reasons. And just to keep you in suspense, we do have... Uh, uh, 
Madam Vice President coming tomorrow to officially uh, welcome us uh, to the nation of Zambia at this conference. So, but we won't tell you when, but it's going to happen tomorrow sometime. So we're excited what God is going to be doing. Some of the fathers of our nation will be speaking tomorrow. You know, Bishop Imakando, oh my God, I tell you, I just have fallen in love with Bishop Imakando. We fell in love with each other in Ivory Coast. With Bishop Tutu Bismarck, I had no idea Bishop Makando was a funny side to him. He was, he made me laugh so hard. You know, we had, I mean, and, and every, every time he comes to America, I call him, Bishop, where are you? I mean, he's just been an honorable man, and he called me today. Actually, you know what? He is having a conference this whole week in Kit, in Kit, in Indola, I think, for Bread of Life. He's, he's flying from there in the morning just for this meeting and then goes back. That's the level of support he's giving me. And I said, Bishop, thank you. He said, no, Francis, for you, I will come and do this. Bishop Eddie Gangambi is going to be in the house. Talk to me, somebody. Amen. Pastor Moses Suluba will, bring it, will be in the house. It's going to be an amazing time. Bishop Max Nalumango is going to be in the house. It's going to be an amazing time. And, of course, we know what Apostle uh, Snyangwe can do. So I want you to raise your hand in expectation. I want you to lift up your hands. Amen. Everybody stand up where, everywhere you can. If you can stand up, please. Let's raise our hands. We know people are at work right now. We see people coming in now because it's 5 o'clock. Amen. You know, we've got a lot of Zambians who are employees, but I, I prophesy to you, many of you within two years, you won't be an employee. You have your own business that will pay you more money than a, working for anybody else. I prophesy Zambia is a spirit of kingdom entrepreneurship is coming on the people of Zambia. I prophesy it. Oh, somebody ought to receive the prophecy. It's a blank check for somebody who says, I'm tired of working for somebody. If God has a business for me, I receive it by the spirit of God. Talk to me, somebody. Amen. Father, we thank you. We give you. We honor you, Lord, that we know that the court of heaven is open. The heavens above us is open. We are going to move like never before in Jesus' name. Lord, we welcome you, King of kings and Lord of lords. We thank you that the judgments that will be rendered against the demonic powers in the, during these three days through the prayers and all that will be offered, Lord, who, Lord, will bring great breakthrough signs and wonders to your sons and daughters that they'll look back to this weekend as the weekend where everything shifted. In Jesus' name. And the people said, Amen. Amen. Give God a shout and welcome to the Africa Courts of Heaven and Prayer Summit. Welcome in Jesus' name. And by the way, help me welcome. We have, a, we have over 300 Americans who are live streaming right now. Welcome. Come on. Wave, wave. There are over 300 American partners of my ministry, uh, European and Australia, who are live streaming right now. Amen. Praise the Lord. By the way, if you know people in Zambia who can't make it, all they have to do is go to Francis Mouse International on YouTube. All the live streams are public. They can watch every session on YouTube if they can't make it for whatever reason from the different, the 10 provinces. You text them, tell them, go to Francis Mouse, that, uh, Francis Mouse International and actually tell them to subscribe. That way they won't miss the notices coming to them and they can live stream this feed into their home because God works miracles through television, through air, and we've seen so many miracles and we want them, God, to touch them. Amen? Praise God. Hallelujah. Thank you. Thank you so much. We love you. Thank you for coming. God bless you. And let's enjoy Jesus with two more songs before our master of ceremony comes to introduce our speaker. Sundo kainda ya shati 
It's very simple. With open hearts, oh, let the ancient words in. Can you say it one more time? We have come with open hearts. And here, that can say these words. Can you say these words to worship? To worship you. To worship you. Ali, Ali, to worship you. Can you tell somebody in this place and say, to worship you, Jesus. To worship you. To worship you. Say, day and night, night and 
night and day let in sin. Do I have a witness that can say day and night? Day and night, night and day. Let the worship rise, day and night, night and day, let it rise. Day and night, night and day, let it rise. Can somebody worship us a day and night, night and day, let it rise. very personal. So here I am to worship. Here I am to bow down. Here I am to say that you're my God. Do I have a witness? You're all together lovely. All together worthy. All together Wonderful to Can we say here I am Say here I am To worship Here I am Lord To bow down Here I am To say that You're mine All together love is saying Everybody raise your hands to the heavens. Just raise your hands. Here I am to work. Here I am to bow. Here I am to say that you're my heart. In this atmosphere, spirit, lovely, all together. All together, wonderful to me. In the words of Bishop Mumba, Mumbi, it's not a tradition, but an altar is being set tonight. And I want us to do a physical thing. If you can, and you say, tonight I'm connecting with Jesus, who is the stairway between heaven and earth. Just walk over to the front and just be at liberty just to give him worship. Just be at liberty. We make that invitation from the back to the front. If you want to connect with Jesus, who is the stairway between heaven and earth? Jesus is the stairway between. He says, Lord, you will see a heaven shall open and you shall see angels descending and ascending. And as this conference begins, it has to begin with a deep well of worship. So just from your comfort zone, just leave your comfort zone. Just leave your comfort zone. Just cry out to the Lord. Cry out to the Lord and worship Jesus. Cry out to the Lord and worship Jesus. In the book of Revelation, John sees an angel, Jesus, and he says, come up here. And I hear that invitation that as we begin, he's saying, come up here. Come up here, and I'll show you great and mighty things. Come up here, and I'll show you great and mighty things. Say, come up here, and I'll show you great and mighty things. Can you sing with me? Say, come up, come up here, and 
I'll show you great and mighty things. Can you come say, come up here and I'll show you, and I'll show you great and mighty things. Hey, somebody say, come up here. There's a calling. I'll show you great and mighty things. So here I am, say, here I am to worship. Here I am to bow. Say, here I am to say that you're mine. You're all together lovely, all together worthy, all together wonderful. Can you sing it one more time? Here I am. Here I am. It's personal. To worship. Say, here I am to bow down. Say, here I am to say that you're my God. You're all together lovely. All together worthy. All together. Just where you are, raise those hands and open your mouth and bless the king. That's what he desires. That's what he desires. Just open your mouth. Let's connect with Jesus, who is the stairway between heaven and earth. And allow angels to ascend and descend. Because he's worthy to take the scroll and to open its seals, he was slain. He redeemed us to God by his blood from every tribe and tongue and people. Hallelujah. Just bring the volume, bring the volume. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Just raise the volume, give me G. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let me hear the keys. Just raise those hands in his presence. It's very important to connect with Jesus, the stairway. Just tell him I'm here. Tell him I'm here. Tell him I'm here, Jesus, to worship. You're worthy to take the scroll and to open its seals. You were slain. You redeemed us to God by your blood from every tribe and tongue and people and nations. You made us a kingdom of kings and priests to God. We are royalty. That's who we are. We shall rule and reign here on earth. Worthy is the Lamb who was slain. Worthy is the Lamb, is the Son of Life. To receive power and riches, wisdom and strength, honor and glory and blessings. So it's a blessing, blessing and honor, glory and power, say, be unto him who sits. On the throne, can we say blessing and honor? We say blessing and honor, glory, glory and power be unto Him, be unto Him who sits on the throne. Blessing and honor, we say. 
blessing and honor. Come along with us, this glory and power. Say, be unto him who sits on the throne. Blessing and honor, we sing, blessing, we say, blessing and honor. Glory, glory and power. Be unto him, be unto him who sits on the throne, on the throne. Oh, blessing and honor, say blessing. Glory and power. I worship you say blessing and honor glory and power say glory and power be unto him be unto him who sits on the throne let's bless him tonight let's bless him with blessing say blessing and honor glory and power Blessing and honor, glory and power, say, be unto him who sits on the throne, reigning in majesty, can we say, be unto him, say, be unto him who sits on the throne. Everybody now reach out to him, say, oh, oh. Just whisper with us, holy we say, holy is the king. Everybody whisper, holy is the king. Say, holy is the king. We cry, holy, holy, say, holy. Under one minute, just worship him and bless him, the king. Just worship the king. Just love the king. Open your mouth. Open your mouth everywhere. Just worship the king. Let me hear you, Zion. Worship the king. Open your mouth and bless him. The king is holy. He's in this place. He is holy. He is holy. Yeah, where we sing, holy is the King. Say, 
Come on, open up your mouth. We are before the King of Glory. You are holy, Jesus. You are holy, Jesus. You are holy, Jesus. You are holy, Jesus. Oh, I want you to hear this as we hand over. The Lord told me that as we prepare the first day during worship, I received a text from the U.S. from Dave Dalton. You know him, sir. And he said, you are going to declare not worship as in W-O-R, but W-A-R-S, worship. And you see, there's a resistance to the move of God everywhere. And so you gotta be sensitive. You just don't go with the song, but you go with the spirit. That's why you see me holding on there. And by the spirit, we've called you to come because an altar of worship has to be raised. Hallelujah. For us to go to the next place, for us to, to get the victory that we want. So just under two minutes more, I'm under authority, but just press in and create that war cry in the spirit. Praise him. I can't hear the music behind, so just help us. Just open your mouth right now and just begin to worship him. I'm not asking you to intercede. I'm asking you to honor the king. Because the king deserves worship. We bless you, King of Glory. Praise the prophesy. Oh. Prophetic dance. Oh, Come on, let's honor the king in the house. Oh, oh, Come on, dance before the king. Dance before the king. Dance before the king. Dance before the king. Be unto him, holy is the king, we say holy, we say holy the king, the king. Everybody in the building, can you connect? We say holy, holy is the king. Holy is the king. Holy is the king. The king. Holy is the king of kings. Yes, holy is the king. Break it down, just one last verse, one last verse. Yes. 
you cannot come before the king. Two things only happen before the king. You are either on the floor or you are standing. You can't sit comfortably in your seat before the king. We have examples of kings and chiefs that we gather here. You can never go into a chiefdom and sit and walk and look at the king and say, Oh, king, I've come to worship you. It's impossible. It's practically impossible to come before a chief and then you sit and you're looking at him and say, Cannabis. When you come before the chief, even a man, you are either bowing down or you give him a standing ovation. So which one of the two? I don't want to see nobody get comfortable in their seat. If we know that Jesus is King of Kings and is Lord of Lords, somebody ought to give him the honor that he deserves. A lot of us are sensitive to men, but I want us to be sensitive to the King. Oh. So, hallelujah, listen to this. Hey, I will sing hallelujah until you come again. You see, we gotta set the foundation in this place. I will dance. I will dance in your presence until you come again. Do I have a witness that can worship the king? Yeah, I would. I will sing hallelujah until you come again. Can somebody worship the king? I will dance. I will dance in your presence till you come again. Do I have a witness? Hey, I will sing. I will sing hallelujah until you come again. Can somebody help me with this? Hallelujah. Hey, I will sing. I will sing hallelujah till you come, till you come again. I will dance in your presence. Say, I will dance in your presence till you come again. I will sing hallelujah. Say, I will sing hallelujah till you come again. I don't know about you. But worship like it's the last. Dance in your prayer. Dance it. Dance in your presence. Dance in your presence. Dance in your presence. I will dance in your presence. Dance in your presence. Dance in your presence. Dance in your I will dance in your presence. I will dance. I will dance. Let's give it to you. I will celebrate. I celebrate your way. Dance in your I will dance. 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 I will sing hallelujah. See will you come again. I will dance in your presence till you come again. As I hand over to Bishop Mumbi, it's not a coincidence that our master of ceremony deals with chiefs, isn't it? But as a worship leader for years, I have seen folks come to church when a president walks in, they run around, they panic, they even injure each other to who will be close to who, the, the VIP guests. They fight to which is the, the honorary, the VVIP. I have watched and the Lord told me that today when you begin, Jesus is king. For too long, you see, umwana munganda, Sometimes, I'm saying like a child in the house, you think they're always a child, but you, what you forget is that they're growing and they're observing. And my observation as a child in the house is that eclipse the Father God. We've eclipsed the Father God and we've gone for VVIPs and the worship of God has been reduced to the worship of man. That's why you preach on idols. 
But the biggest idol of the Pentecostals is their pastor. The Lord told me to tell you, a lot of you don't know God. You don't even know the voice of God, but you know the voice of your pastor. There's a difference. God is calling us back to the Father. Because when the matter is done, settled and done, it's the Father on the throne after Jesus hands back the kingdom to him. So it's high time. We need to exalt the Father God. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Let's give the Lord a clap offering. Hallelujah. And all the saints said, Amen. And all the saints said, you may take your seats. Thank you, Apostle Lee Robertson serves as Apostle of Sons of God Embassy in Kinsland, Georgia, USA. Apostle Lee Robertson has the heart of the Father for the emerging generation. He impacts the lives of many through his prayers, prophetic insight, and wisdom. He is known for his teaching and preaching of the Word of God and has witnessed many signs and wonders in his ministry. He also moves in great revelation of the Spirit of God. He has been sent to raise up sons of God, to equip and train them for their God-given assignment. He is truly fulfilling the call on his life by uncovering the gifts that lie within many. Apostle Robertson walks in wisdom beyond his years, and with a humble heart he reaches many lost souls for the kingdom of God. He is happily married to Prophetess April, and they have one child. Apostle Lee recently released a book that is taking the body of Christ by storm titled, The Blood, The Other Voice in the Courts of Heaven. Apostle Lee Robertson currently operates under the apostolic covering of his spiritual father, Apostle Francis Miles, founder of Francis Miles International. Let's welcome to the stage, Apostle Lee Robertson. God in a great ministry and sons and daughters all over America even though he's one of my sons he's a father himself of churches of uh, sons and daughters in the United States of America and he wrote a revolutionary book called the, the blood the other voice in the courts of heaven that is taken America and the world by storm they actually Bible studies mushrooming around the world around his book as far as Australia uh, it is an amazing revelation. I've read book on the blood, but he, this book is a whole new understanding. It's a whole new perspective on the mystery of the blood, especially as a voice in the courts of heaven. So I am telling you, he's, you know, he, it's been the joy of my life to work with him. We preached at Celebration Church in Zimbabwe together, you know, so this is the first time he come to the Republic of Zambia. So I'm very honored. So saying, he is the apostle of Sons of God Embassy. In Jacksonville, Florida, married to my spiritual daughter, Prophetess April. What a woman of God. Next time she, they'll be here together. But anyway, Zambia with Jesus, joy. And those online, let's welcome, stand up, let's welcome to the stage for the first time in Zambia, Apostle Lee Robertson as he comes to do the first session of the Courts of Heaven, Africa edition and prayer summit. Come on, somebody, Jesus, joy. Welcome him to the Republic of Zambia where God lives. Hallelujah. How many love the Lord in this place? Now, how many love Jesus in this place? Come on. That's good for the president, but how many love Jesus in this place? Come on and lift your voice. Hallelujah. Help me honor my papa, my mom, apostle, and mama Camilla Miles. Come on and help me honor them in Jesus' mighty name. Hallelujah. Honor is extremely big in my house. Honor is one of the highest seed one can sow. Appreciation is the bridge to honor. But honor is the proof that you recognize who sent the man and woman of God. Come on, somebody. So let's honor them properly in Jesus' mighty name. We do honor all the great men and women of God. Uh, I do, I'm, I'm terrible with names, but I honor you in Jesus' mighty name, in your place, in your glory, in your anointing. I do greet you in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ from Sons of God Embassy. You may be seated in, in heavenly places. God bless you. I, I have uh, 
Before I begin on the teaching on the blood, I want to say this because I've never been a man that, that chased fame. I just want to finish my race. Hello, somebody. But this book, when I wrote this book, I didn't even ask for this book. I went in the mountains. The Lord brought me in the mountain for 30 days and gave me an assignment. I was tasked to put water in a basin for 30 days. And the Lord said, he gave me Hebrews 9 and 14 and said, I want you to come before me for 30 days and I want you to plead the blood of Jesus over you. I'm saying this because I want you, this book uh, is, is outside along with two other books, but there's a mandate for the blood to return to the body of Christ. We cannot go into the glory that everyone has prophesied until the blood cleansed the body. Are you hearing what I'm saying? There's a process that the blood has a responsibility of prepping us for the groom. Hello. The Bible says in Hebrews 9 and 14 that he presented himself spotless and without blemish. Then the scripture goes on to say that he's returning for a church without spot or what? Blemish. So the blood has a responsibility of cleansing us from spot and blemishes so that we can match the groom on that great day. And so I say this with a, uh, an urgency to help me get this message out. Tonight you will hear, today you will hear this revelation. And I know many of you are familiar with the blood, pleading the blood. My grandmother pled the blood. Come on. How many of you here, your family member or your grandma, your mother pled the blood? Glory to God. And so I'm not a stranger to it. But what I encountered in the mountains of Sedona wrecked my life. In fact, I repented so much in the mountains, not because I was in so much trouble, but because I did not teach the blood properly. That's how powerful this revelation is. Hello, somebody. And so tonight I'm going to talk to you from the subject, the forgotten voice. I'm going to show you how powerful the blood is and how when you activate the blood, apply the blood in your life, you will get the same result that even God the Father used the blood. Hello, somebody. And so, I was in the mountains for 30 days and the Lord told me to come before him for 30 days and he said, I want you to treat the water as it was blood. He said, I want you to plead the blood over you for 30 days. And I did that. I began with my conscience, and then it moved on to seven different parts of my body. It went from my conscience to my hands, to my eyes, my ears, my mouth, my heart, and my feet. Seven areas. How many areas did the blood, did Jesus shed the blood? Seven areas. How many golden candlesticks do you have? Seven. Seven spirits, seven horns. The priest sprinkled the blood seven times. This is something that God wants in the body of Christ. So we're going to look at it in a different perspective tonight. Is that all right? If you have your Bibles, let's go to Hebrews 12 and 24. We're going to begin there. Father, I thank you tonight. I bless you. I am honored to be standing and representing the kingdom of God. I thank you that the blood has been shed before the foundation of the world. Lord, I thank you that you have given us the ability through the blood to overcome any adversary. So I apply the blood to this area, to this ground, to this incredible nation. That by the time we leave, the nation would be set free from every spot and blemish. In Jesus' name, amen. Hebrews 12 and 24 says, And to Jesus, the mediator of the new covenant, and uh, to the blood of sprinkling, 
that speaketh better things than that of Abel. Hebrews 12, 24 teaches us two things. That the blood has a voice. And when I was in the mountain, the Holy Spirit said to me, I'm going to take you in another dimension of the blood. And when he said this, I said, what are you saying? He said, when your forefathers came before you and pled the blood, they saw great victory. He said, but they, the blood became common. So they were just saying it. And so therefore, it became common just like the faith teaching. How many remember the faith teaching? Name it, claim it, grab it. And then he said something to me that shook me. He said, I want you to fellowship with the blood. I said, fellowship with the blood threw me back. Because I never heard of fellowship with the blood. Obviously, you fellowship with the Father. You fellowship with the Son. You fellowship with the Holy Spirit. But I never heard fellowship with the blood. That's when the Holy Spirit rebuked me and took me to Hebrews 12 and 24. He says, and to Jesus, the mediator of the new covenant, and the blood sprinkled, which speaketh better things than that of Abel. And then he made this statement. If it speaks, it's alive. Hello, somebody. <laughs> if it speaks, what? It's alive. And he says, what's going to happen with this generation? He says, first you must understand, you're not just the generation of the Holy Spirit. You are also the generation of the blood. Because the blood made its appearance before the Holy Spirit did. John 19, Jesus was pierced in the side and blood came out. Acts 2 is when the Holy Ghost made his entrance into the earth. So the blood came before the Holy Spirit. So therefore, you're not just the generation of the Holy Spirit, you're also the generation of the blood. But you are called to fellowship with the blood because anything you fellowship that thing has legal right to clothe you. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Can you imagine being clothed in the blood of Christ? Can you imagine walking around with the pure DNA of the Father himself? This is what's getting ready to happen to Zambia. This is what's getting ready to happen to you that are fellowshipping with the blood. You are about to enter into a realm where the blood is about to clothe you itself. Because there is a dimension in the blood that works only by the blood that the Holy Spirit cannot do. Let me explain. It is the blood that cleanses you, but it's the Holy Spirit that purifies you. I'm going to say that again. It's the blood that cleanses you, but it's the Holy Spirit that purifies you. You never purify something that's filthy. That's why we need the blood, because the blood has to cleanse the body before that second mechanism of the Holy Spirit, where Jesus said that the Holy Spirit will come with Holy Spirit and what? Fire. That fire can't hit the church until the church get cleansed of the spot and blemishes. We are asking for glory, but we are filthy. We are asking for power, but we are with blemishes. That's why we need the fellowship because there's a group of people that's about to unleash the blood and about to cleanse the body of Christ of all these false doctrines. Come on, somebody. Of this false grace teaching. Come on, somebody. There's false prophecies. All these things need to be cleansed, but the only thing that's going to cleanse it is the blood. We are asking the Holy Spirit to do what the blood is assigned to do. And we're wondering why we are walking and being defeated. The second thing the Lord showed me in Hebrews 12, 24, he said, I want you to look at Hebrews 12 and 24. He says that the blood speaks better things than that of Abel. I said, yes, Lord. He said, no, you don't understand. He said, Abel blood, for those of you that are confused, even Abel blood has a voice. Y'all ain't talking to me. Abel blood had a voice. The Bible said that the voice of Abel blood got the father's attention. And he stopped and said to his brother, your blood cries out from the earth. Isn't that powerful? Abel blood stopped God in his tracks. And he rebuked his brother because his blood 
appeared to be innocent, but it wasn't because the blood had iniquity. But his blood stopped the father. Are you hear what I'm saying? Now watch this. God said to me, Abel blood cried out for vengeance. He said, but you cannot operate in the blood of the lamb because Abel blood cried out as a victim. Jesus' blood cries out as victory. So you can't be a victim and walk in victory at the same time. Hello, somebody. So tonight you have to strip that mentality, I'm a victim. And you have to stand in victory because the blood gives you victory. And so then the Holy Spirit began to show me a mystery. He says, let me show you this mystery. And this is where it all began and so when I teach, I have to begin here, Revelation 13 and 8. Let's go there. Revelation 13 and 8. And I'm going to read from the New Living Translation so that you can see how powerful this blood is. Hallelujah. Revelation 13 and 8. On the fourth day in my mountain, I was handcuffed by the Holy Spirit. He said these words to me. Look at Revelation 13 and 8. I went to Revelation 13 and 8, and it said, And all the people who belong to this world worship the beast. They are the ones whose name was not written in the book of life, belong to the Lamb who was slaughtered or slain before the world was made. When was he slain? When was he slain? Before the world was made. Now this is a very powerful revelation. If you're going to understand the power of the blood and the mystery of the blood and go to the next dimension of the blood, you must understand Revelation 13 and 8. It says that the lamb was slain before the world was made. And then the Lord spoke to me and says, this is the mystery of the blood. This is the mystery of the forgotten voice. That the blood was shed before earth even came. So that means that everything that came in, into time came through the blood. Y'all not listening to me. So the earth came what? Through the blood. The trees came what? Through the blood. So everything in the earth came through the blood first. Now the reason I'm saying that the, the blood... It's the forgotten voice. It's because to understand this mystery, we must go to Genesis 1 and 26. And then we can, we can begin to build this foundation and you can begin to see how powerful this blood is going to work in your life. But you must understand that the earth itself came through the blood first and then it came into existence. So even God the Father even used the blood. So when God took Adam from the dust and blew in that dust that dust came from the blood how do I know because Adam name means red man Adam name means red man so God prophetically was announcing that the first man was wrapped in the blood y'all not talking to me today so, when by the time Genesis 1.26 comes and God says, let us make man in our image, the us we teach is the counsel of God. You teach that it's the Father, the Son, the Word, and the Holy Spirit, and you are correct. But there's another one that is missing from that counsel, and it's the blood. So that's why the blood is the forgotten voice because we don't mention it in the council of Genesis 126. Why am I saying this? Because the blood was a part of the council creating man. Because the Bible says that Adam became a living soul. Show me a soul without blood. Hello? Show me a soul without blood. So therefore, technically, Adam was wrapped in the blood of the lamb. My God. 
This is why when Genesis 1, 21 and 2 come in existence, when the earth without form and void, this is why it was easy for God to resurrect the earth because the earth itself was suspended in that blood. This is the power of the blood that you're about to use in your life. So when God said, let there be light, the earth could not disobey him because the light that was in the blood came in agreement with that word and light came. So therefore, the first victory that the earth experienced was because of the blood held the earth in suspense. Why am I saying this? Because there are three spirits that fight you. It's the first spirit, it's without form. This deals with your appearance. This is what God was doing when he came up. It looked like the earth had nothing. It looked like the earth was not made of anything. And that's what many of you are going through. It looked like you are mount to nothing. It looked like you are not even, even going to be anything. It is the appearance. And that's why the blood must be applied to your life because it restores the original form that God created you before time even received you. So therefore, you cannot go without being formed because the blood is holding you in suspense, waiting for you to speak the same word that God your father spoke and say, let there be light, let there be understanding, let me come forth, let me stand, let me declare, let me decree because of the blood. This is the power of the blood. The second spirit that will fight you is void. The earth the enemy tried to void out what God created. See, void is the spirit that deals with what God created you to be. Are you hearing what I'm saying? So void means that the enemy thinks that he has canceled what you was created to be. So void deals with your purpose. Void is what God sent you in the earth for. Why is this so important? Because once you get rid of the void spirit, you won't keep asking why. Why am I going through this? Why am I facing this? Why am I suffering so long? Why am I in so much pain? Why I got to deal with this sickness? It's because the spirit of void is trying to counsel what God created you to be. But I come to Zambia tonight to prophesy that by the blood of the Lamb, that the spirit of void is going to leave your life and you shall come forth and purpose and demonstration of what God created you to be and you shall overcome. When I was fellowshipping, the Holy Spirit said something to me. He said, you need to understand the power of the blood. He said, the blood gives you legal right to return to your origin. Oh, God, somebody help me. Help me in this place. He said, you need to understand that the blood gives you legal right to return to your origin. So before cancer, before the disease, before you lost all of your finances, before the pain, before the misery, the blood gives you legal right to go back to your origin and rewrite what the enemy tried to write in your life. This is the power of the blood. This is why God can walk up on the earth. This is why when he came up on the earth, he wasn't even worried because he knew that the earth came through the blood first. And so the blood held it in suspense, waiting for life to come and speak. Oh, God, I wish I could help somebody in here. See, so the problem is you're waiting for a prophet. You're waiting for your name to be called. You're waiting for somebody to call you out. When you understand the power of the blood, you don't need nobody to lay hands on you. You can just say, blood of Christ, I travel with you before this thing hit me, and I rewrite what the enemy tried to write over my life. I refuse refuse to walk in sickness. I refuse to be in disease. I refuse. Come on, somebody. You have to refuse and then speak. So, on day 18, 
the blood filled the whole room. And this is what blew my mind. When the blood came in, I've had experience with the Holy Spirit. I had experience with the Father. I've had experience with Jesus. I've, I've had in multiple experiences. But when the blood filled that house, I never experienced this before. A freedom that can't be measured in time. But not my freedom alone. This is how powerful the blood was. The furniture in the house was alive. Nobody talking to me. No, you didn't catch that. The furniture in the house was alive. I'm trying to tell you that wherever the blood shows up in your life, whatever around you must come alive. It can't die. It can't be canceled. It can't participate with premature death. You ain't talking to me. I'm trying to find somebody in Zambia that's ready to awaken up the blood in their generation and say, I'm tired of losing my business. I'm tired of my family member dying. I'm tired of my, my mother leaving before time. Somebody need to fellowship with the blood and bring that life into your house. And so, he began to teach me the mystery of the blood. He says, here's your problem with the body of Christ. Y'all are happy with the blood, with cleansing your sin. <laughs> the blood has a higher purpose than just washing your sins away. No, the blood has an agenda. It's trying to give you the life of the Father. In Genesis 126, it says, let us make man in our image. Second part, and likeness. Likeness deals with DNA. Y'all not hear me. Likeness deals with DNA. So if the blood didn't make its appearance in the garden, why would God say give them our likeness? Because Adam had the DNA of the father. His DNA was just like the father. And so you heard that old saying, you're just like your dad? Come on, somebody. You're going to be just like your mother. You're going to be just like anybody out there. Wave at me if you know what I'm talking about. Well, they're basing it off of a, a history of repeats that happens in your bloodline. But here's what God is saying to us tonight. He's saying those that's willing to be baptized in the blood of Christ, I'm going to give you my likeness. And you're going to be just like Papa. Where you're creating, where there's death, you will call life. Where there's shortage, you will bring multiplication. Jesus was just acting just like his father. And then he turned around and said to you, Peter said, teach us how to pray. He said, pray like this. Our father. Come on, did you catch that? Our father. Not mine, our See, the problem with the church is you happy with being called a Christian. Hello? You satisfied with just being a called a Christian. Jesus and God the Father never called you a Christian. They called you a Christian. In fact, it wasn't a compliment. It was an insult. But God called you a son. They're not led by the Spirit or called sons of God. John 1 and 12, behold, I gave no power to become sons of God. But the only way that I can identify my sons is by my blood. When I draw the blood from them, the blood tells them who their daddy is. You either walking in the bloodline of Adam or you walking in the bloodline of Christ. But today, I decree that you're walking in the bloodline of Christ. And God the Father is your Abba. Is you in this house with me tonight? Shout yes. The blood of Christ gives the Father permission to call you son. Oh, see, the problem with the body of Christ is they think it was a man on that cross. That was not a man. That was a God. Oh, why? Why a God? Because Jesus said, don't look at me crazy. Jesus said this statement. He said, know it is written that it says that know ye not that ye are what? 
gods. Adam was a god in the earth. He didn't fall from heaven. Come on, let's say amen. He didn't fall from the third realm. He fell from his godship. You ain't in here. He fell from his godship. When he sinned, his blood no longer matched his father. So his father had to move him out until he relieved himself of being a bastard. But the only way he can relieve himself of being a bastard, it needed to be another son come and return the blood that he dropped into God. His name name is Jesus Christ and he's here in Zambia tonight and he's here to say I have come to set the captive free not from drugs not from alcohol not from home organ but from your bloodline because if you understand you are son you won't be attracted to sin am I making sense in this house this is the power of the blood. And see, people don't understand it because you happy with just the blood washing your sin away. You happy, happy, glad my sins can no longer be cast. No, 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 no. The blood says, I will return you to your Godship where you can take over governments. You ain't talking to me. Where you can control the atmosphere. You ain't talking to me. Where you can determine who get elected or not. Come on and talk to me. Instead of witchcraft and sorcery governing my earth, it's supposed to be a son. It's supposed to be a son. A son walking in my bloodline, speaking what I would speak. So I won't have to change what you say. This is the first thing that the bloodline gave Adam. The first thing that the bloodline gave Adam was the names to every animal. <laughs> Did God correct him? No. Did God change the names? No. Because his likeness. He said, let me see what this boy going to call them. And he bought every animal in front of him and sat back and watched his son. His son said, giraffe, giraffe. And the father said, well done. Elephant. You ain't talking to me. Elephant, well done. Zebra, why? Because God didn't interrupt because he had the same bloodline. I'm here to prophesy to Zambia. Somebody in this house is about to hang the same bloodline. And God the Father going to be sitting back cheering because you're going to be calling things to be as though they are not. You're going to command the economy to change in Zambia. And Zambia ain't going to have no choice but to change. Why? Because a son is speaking. You're going to command your lineage, hello, to be recovered from everything that's been robbed by iniquity. Why? Because a son is speaking. You're going to command the hurricane to say, not this time. You can't come to Zambia. You can't touch this land. You can't touch these people. Why? Because a son is speaking with the bloodline of the father. What? Can I go a little further? The council lets us know who to us. We left out the blood. Therefore, we have a bloodless church. That's why so much competition, jealousy, envy, robbery in the church is our fault because we stopped teaching on the blood. And the blood can't give you redemption, not true redemption, because you are not fellowshipping with it. See, fellowship gives God legal right to merge with you. It is how you become one with him. This is why Jesus made that declaration say, I and the Father are one. He wasn't not talking about so much that we're in agreement. He was really saying that his blood type is my blood type. We don't have nothing different. My mind is like him. My thoughts is like him. My heart is like him. My hands is just like him. My feet is just like him. Why? Because we got the same blood coming through him. It's other. Are you hearing what I'm saying? And that's what he's trying to say to you when he said to John 17. He said, Lord, don't take them out of the world. He said, but keep them there. But make them one like you and I are one. And I have never seen what Jesus' prayer have never went unanswered. So you might as well get ready for that prayer to happen because the blood is about to bring you into a dimension where unity is about to hit you. All of heaven is about to align 
align with you because you got the bloodline of your father. And when you stand and come out of your prayer room and open your mouth, Zambia is going to begin to praise. Zambia is going to begin to shake. Zambia is going to begin to align because a son has found out I am one just like the father. This is the power of the blood. When you understand the power of the blood, and this what the Holy Spirit said to me. He said, when the church returns to the blood, Jesus can begin to return to the earth. I said, what do you mean? He said, the problem with the church is that y'all look at the cross as Jesus' victory. Oh, help me. See, you view it as Jesus' victory, not ours. And then we have these sad communions where we have white gloves and the communion is like a funeral. Either he's dead or he's alive. I ain't talking to, I'm trying to find somebody. Who, who's, and we stand in like we holy, but it's really a sad countenance. But if you understood the blood of Christ, then you would not look for another. Oh, God. You look in the mirror and say, he sent me. I got the same power. I got the same DNA. I got the same spirit. In fact, the same spirit that raised Jesus from the dead is quickening my mortal body. It's making me just like him. Come on, somebody. Are you hear what I'm saying? And the only people that are bothered by you is those that don't have the same DNA as you. And so the Lord said to me, I want to show you something in the blood. I began to look, and I saw something that shook my mind. He said, watch the blood as it flowed out of Jesus' body. The soldier pierced him in the side, and the Bible says, out came blood and what? Water. Blood and what? Water. He said, do you know what the water represents, sir? I said, no, Lord. He said, the water represents the word. So now the blood and the word is back together again. God help me. The blood and the word is back together again, freeing mankind. How was you created? By the word. How was you created? With the blood. So now, Zambia, the origin of the blood has come back to you tonight. The blood said, let's do it again. Ah. Uh, but the enemy tried to counsel your life. Let's do it again tonight. Is there anybody out there that got faith? And to, to set you up, your seat covers are red. Look at your seat covers. Red. The blood is prophesying all around you. Saying, I'm about to cover you. I'm about to seat you in heavenly places. You can't be seated in heavenly places unless by the blood. Are you hear what I'm saying? Are you hearing what I'm saying? You cannot go in heavenly places. The blood escorted Jesus. Do you know how Jesus got out of hell? Jesus got out of hell because everybody in hell, their bloodline had iniquity. The reason Jesus can walk down in hell and walk around and grab the keys is because his bloodline was absence of iniquity or transgression or trespasser. Everybody in hell had that in their bloodline. This is how Jesus can go down and grab the keys and come back up and hand you the keys. He's not handing the keys to somebody that don't have a blood type. He handed it to you that got the same blood type. He said, behold, I give you the keys to the kingdom, but you can't hold the keys unless you fellowship with my blood so that you understand how to operate with these keys. They're not a foolish act. They are a blood transfusion. They are a blood transaction that I'm passing it to someone who is now bought by the blood. Am I making sense tonight? It is the forgotten voice because we let Jesus speak, but not the blood. Hebrews 12 and 24 says that it is a voice that speaketh better things than that of Abel. Speaketh means that it speaks on a continual basis. The Lord said to me, he said, do you know what the cross was? I said, no, Lord. He said, the cross was the highest altar known to man. It was what? The highest altar known to man. Now, if you read that book, you'll see 
that it, the man is responsible for building the altar. Is that right? Is that right? Here's how dumb mankind is. God let them build the altar that they didn't know was going to set them free. I'm going to say that again. Maybe somebody will catch that. He let men build something they thought was killing somebody, but what they was doing was building an altar. And they didn't even know that they were building an altar to set themselves free. Then he had the perfect offering, the perfect lamb. And then he said something to me that shook me. He said, any altar without blood is an altar absence of life. Oh, God, give me somebody. You can have an altar, but where's the blood? Where's the blood? Because see, what the blood does is while the attendee is absent, the blood is still speaking. Oh, God, give me somebody here to understand that the blood is speaking for you. And it's speaking better things than that of Abel. There's no way in the world that you should be suffering defeat in your life. Because there's a blood, there's a blood, there's an entity in the courts of heaven that's speaking on a continual basis. While you're sleeping, it's speaking. While you're lost, it's speaking. While you confused, it's speaking. While you sick, it's speaking. While you in darkness, it's speaking. You are not even at the altar, but the blood is speaking. And then he said something to me that shook me. He says, you need to understand the mechanism of the blood in the courts of heaven. I said, what's that? He said, the blood not only cleanses you for the court, because we go in and say, blood of Christ, cleanse me. He said, no, 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 no. The blood has a second component for it in the courts of heaven. I said, what's that? He said, it is the expert witness. Somebody need to hear this. The blood is a what? An expert witness. No, you're confused. Because see, in the earth realm, when they call the expert witness to court, they go in and watch the lawyer. Once they start finishing questioning the expert witness, he said to the expert witness, that's your opinion, your professional opinion. Is that right? And the expert witness said, yes, it is. And he said, tell the judge, yes, it is. Here's the problem. Your blood ain't speaking on opinions. You ain't talking to me because in the kingdom there is no opinions so when the blood speaks on your behalf it's speaking truth I don't know what you're saying down here but in the courts of heaven the blood says this is not an opinion it's a fact she's healed he's set free his mind is whole he belongs to me that's not an opinion that's mine the blood is speaking on your behalf it's not an opinion it's the truth somebody shout in this house if you know the blood is speaking on your behalf Then the blood does another mechanism that's so powerful that when you walk away from the courts of heaven, the blood does something that's so powerful that it, it covers you where you can't be located. You ain't, you ain't talking. You ain't talking to me. I'm going to deal with that tomorrow in my Saturday, in my second session. I'm going to show you how the blood hides you where the enemy can't locate you. You ain't talking to me, helping somebody. How many, see, we, we don't even do warfare where we at. We just get in the blood. Your problem is you're not in the blood. I'm going to show you tomorrow how to get in the blood. I'm Saturday. Come on and say amen. Are you listening to me? And so this, the third mechanism of the blood is when you leave the courts, the blood don't just keep speaking for you. It covers you. It gives you, activate Psalms 91 and 1. He that dwelleth in the secret place. Oh, you thought the secret place for faith. No, it can't be faith because even in faith, the enemy still bothers you. You ain't touching me. Even in faith, the enemy even still touches you. Even in faith, Job got touched. You ain't talking to me because in faith don't hide you, but the blood. Woo! Ah, the blood got a way of covering you until God says otherwise. You ain't here. That means if it's covering you, it's covering your house. It's covering your family. It's covering your children. It's covering your finances. It's covering your businesses. That's why we need to fellowship with the blood.
blood and don't just plead the blood. You need to fellowship with it. You need to wake up what's on the inside of what's inside of the blood. The blood has a harvest. Woohoo, Lord. In the early, in the late 1800s, 1900, we had the move of the Holy Ghost. And the reason they walked in so much power in the Holy Ghost is because they fellowship with the Holy Spirit. How many know what I'm talking about? They saw all manner of miracles. Why? Because they fellowship. All the great men and women, if you read their testimony, they will say one thing. They will say they was intimate with the Holy Spirit. They say, in fact, Catherine Kuhlman went in her greatness. She will always hit the stage and say, please don't offend the Holy Spirit. Well, that's the generation that only got one part of what Jesus bought. He sent you, yeah, the Holy Spirit, but he also gave you a force, a power, an authority that the church is not using. It's the blood. And if we fellowship this generation, we are the generation, we are the blood generation. Say it with me. I am the blood generation. In fact, testify. Say, I'm the blood bank of Zambia. Y'all see no mobile banks? You ever see no more? In America, they have them mobile banks that transfer blood to, they, they pay you for their blood. They pay you for your blood. They pay you for your blood. Jesus paid for you. In America, they have no blood, no buses, blood banks parked in parking lots. I prophesy that in your neighborhood, you're going to be the blood bank. My God, on your street, you're going to be the blood bank. In your church, you're going to be the blood bank. Somebody need to wake up the blood. Somebody need to, need to bring the blood back. Somebody need to understand that when I start fellowship with the blood, that's going to be a tidal wave that we tired of tsunamis hitting with water. Y'all ain't talking to me. I'm tired of hurricanes wiping out cities and houses. It's our turn to wipe out sin, to wipe out idols, to wipe out witches, warlocks, sorcerers, dark magic, principalities, powers, and high places. It's time for us to bring a tsunami of the blood to sweep across our nation, start in America, start in Africa. Come on, somebody. But there need to be somebody that's going to fellowship with the blood. Is that you? Is that you? In my studies, I found a section where the high priest, the high priest was the only one that was assigned to the blood. Are you with me? Come on, say amen. The priest was the one that was assigned to the blood. And they were sprinkling the blood seven times. In my study, I found something fascinating. That they would keep the blood in a container. But to keep the blood where the light would constantly move, the priest would take the blood and stir it. So it wouldn't get still. <laughs> so it wouldn't get still. And the Holy Spirit spoke to me. He said, that's what has happened to the church. Y'all had let the blood got still. It's time for you to stir. It's time for you to wake it up. Is there anybody in Zambia that would do a prophetic motion right now with me? Say, I'm the one that's going to stir it for my generation. Is there anybody that will stand and say, I'm about to wake it up in my genes. I'm about to wake it up in my neighborhood. I'm about to, come on, come on, somebody. Do it a prophetic act. Say, I'm about to stir the blood. It's time for us to wake up. Come on, and shout in this house. Say, I am the representative. I'm ready to stir the blood in my house, in my lineage, in my nation, in my neighborhood. In, come on, in my providence. Come on. And so the demonstration of the blood is that once God returned earth back to his purpose, which is replaced void, the final spirit is darkness. Darkness was on the face of the deep. This is a dangerous spirit. Because darkness is the information that God, darkness is the spirit that hides the information that God put in the earth to explain earth why it exists. So when there's darkness in your life, it's the absence of revelation. 
So when darkness sits on your life, if you made this statement, I just want to know my purpose. <laughs> I don't know what God called me to do. It is the evidence that darkness is governing over the face of the deep. The face of the deep is what God hid inside you. In the earthly vessels are treasures. Are you hearing what I'm saying? So the enemy thought that by putting darkness on that, that he will stop the information from getting to the earth on why or what God created it for. Tonight, we're going to destroy that spirit in your life. We're going to destroy that thing that keeps you asking why. Why am I here? Am I important? It is that spirit. Because when the light comes, revelation has been received. And where revelation is, life now can proceed as God created it. Are you hearing what I'm saying? And so, I'm, I leave you with this scripture. 1 John 1 and 7. It says, but if we walk in the light as he is in the light, we have fellowship one with another. And the blood of Jesus Christ, his son cleanses us from all sin. This is the power of this revelation. So the Lord said to me, do you know the power of the bloodline? I said, what, Lord? He says, <laughs> he says, when you restore, when you stop fellowship with the blood, you can now receive legally what Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob didn't finish. You can go in, in because we, what Abraham, Isaac, Jacob is in that bloodline. Hello? Jeremiah, Isaiah, what? It's in that bloodline. When you fellowship, you have legal right to tap into the fullness and download it in your life. In fact, what your grandmother, mother, father did not finish is still in the bloodline. Ah, God. It's waiting for somebody to understand the power of the blood and go in the bloodline and say iniquity loose and then collect what's been held up for years and come back. This is how God, watch me now, come closer. This is how God's going to transfer the wealth of the wicked to the righteous. It's going to be so quick that somebody in here going to go in their bloodline and something wicked was done with iniquity. And when you repent for that iniquity, now all of that belongs to you. And you come out in 24 hours richer than your entire bloodline. This is the power of the blood. The second part of this it cleanses us from all sin. Now, I need to deal with this before I leave. When you fellowship, people ask me all the time, how do you fellowship with the blood? Anything alive, you can fellowship with. Hello? Hello? Anything what? Alive. Anything came from God is alive. Hello? Hello, we are coming to Mount Zion to see the, the living God. To a number of company of angels. And to the just men that has made what? Righteous. Everything that comes from God is alive. Are you with me? So the blood came from the Father. Through Jesus. Because the Bible said it was God in Jesus, reconcile the world back up to him. See, you need to stop seeing Jesus bleeding and seeing God bleed. Why am I saying that? So you understand the power of the blood. That the blood does not get its power from John 19. 
See, we think the blood gets its power at Calvary. No. The blood's authority comes from eternity. Revelation 13 and 8 said, said it, that he was what? Slain when? Before the foundation of the world. So when John 19 takes place, it's time receiving what Revelation gave birth to. That's why you can't see the blood from Calvary. You got to see it from eternity. So when, I, when you apply the blood now, it's eternity erasing what time tried to give you. So when you unleash the blood, you are saying to time, we did not agree with this in eternity. We was not a part of this in eternity. Why are you trying to deceive me? Why are you trying to rob me? Time did not give birth to me. Eternity did. So since eternity gave birth to me, since eternity now has blood suspended in eternity, anytime I remember, anytime I come to myself and I apply the blood, I'm saying to time, loose me. I have an eternity, an eternal agenda. I have an eternal finances. I have an eternal health. So therefore today, Time must lose what eternity gave me. This is why when you fellowship, you must understand you're not approaching something that Calvary gave you. You're not approaching something that the old rugged cross gave you. It was the manifestation. It's the lamb that was hanging in eternity decided to get off eternity, step in time, and say, since they can't catch it, let me bring it to them. Let me dress it up, have it look like them, and let them kill me to save them and set them free. Let me trick them to think that they're doing something when they're really setting themselves free. Let me dress like them, talk like them, sleep like them, act like them, eat like them to save them and bring them back to what I gave birth to. You're not an imposter. You're not a whoremonger. You're not an adulterer. You are a son that he came seeking for and he came to return your bloodline and he said now arise and shine for your glory has come. Shall yes. When you understand the power of the blood, your fellowship will go to another level. I share this with you, and then I'm gonna leave. I know I got to pray. I want to pray, but I want to destroy these three spirits. I want to destroy these three spirits. I want to share this with you. On day 18, the blood came in the house. An angel of the Lord woke me up. I had a habit of fellowshipping at 4 a.m cut loose, worship, whenever, and then I will go straight into the blood. But this morning, an angel of the Lord said, Son of man, arise, for this is the day, day 18. I jumped up excited. I was like, oh yeah, we're going to travel, go in the spirit. I'm going to see something glorious. Hello, somebody. I said, oh, I can't wait to see what's going to happen. And I come, jumped in the shower. I came running out, and uh, Holy Spirit said, grab that mop. I said, mop? He said, yes, grab the mop. He said, fill it with solution. He said, now go back to your shower. You're going to mop the flow in the entire house. I began to mop. Still confused about this experience. I could have did this without the Holy Ghost. Come on, somebody. And so... I got in the front where I was doing all my praying and fasting and reading. And I got to a spot on the floor. And I rubbed and rubbed and rubbed. The spot wouldn't move. I rubbed and rubbed and rubbed. The spot wouldn't move. So I went back, got more solution, made it stronger, put it in, come back, put the elbows in. 
Finally, the spot lift. Holy Spirit says something to me. He said, you saw that spot? I said, yes. He said, you had to work to move it. I said, yes. He said, the solution helped me. I said, yes. He said, so is my children. There are a lot of spots and blemishes in their lives. And just applying the blood one time may not move that spot. Uh-oh. Don't get quiet on me now. Come on. There's some things, spots, molestation, rape, trauma. These are all spots and blemishes that you just can't apply the blood one time. You got to fellowship with the blood over and over and over and over and over. And see, sometimes you be thinking, ain't nothing happening. That's because that spot had your assistance in putting it there. Hello. And so then he said to me, I was happy I got the spot up. He said, no, you're not finished. Because there was an area over there that had a rug just like this. And he says, move the rug. I moved the rug. And men, women know what I'm talking about. But if you move this rug and this rug been here for a while, there's a stain that goes all the way around. But the area there is pretty much clean. But there's a stain all the way around the rug. And the Holy Spirit says, you know what that stain is? I says, no. He said, that's iniquity. Iniquity lets you run and do good for a little while. But then when you try to get out of the box, that iniquity pulls you back. The blood is designed to remove that iniquity. So you won't have any barriers in your life. Where there won't be any more restrictions. Come on and say Amen. Now it's time for the blood to remove the spot and blemishes. If you're in here and you want those three areas removed from your life, I want you to come to this altar. If you're in here, you testify to what I preach, and you want those areas moved, I want you to come to the altar. It's time for the blood to remove everything from your life. In Jesus' mighty name. Hello. Hello. If you're dealing with, come on. It's all right. It's time to move. It's time. How many see the power of the blood? How many see the power of the blood? Who see the power of the blood? This makes sense? We're going to move three spirits out of your life. The first one we're going to deal with is form. Form deals with your appearance. It's when you're not happy with how you look. Oh, God, help me somebody. Then we're going to remove that void stamp the enemy put on your soul. Now, you recognize it as this. This is void. This is a void spirit. Have you ever made this statement or you tried to feel a part of your life that never get filled? Anybody? Come on. You with the preacher. I've been there. Come on. It's okay. Let's, let's get set free. That's the void spirit. That's the same thing that was on the earth. It says that God came up on the earth. It was without what? Form. Void. Darkness. The final thing we're going to deal with is darkness. Darkness is, is the spirit that keeps you searching for what you were here for. Let me help you with something. You don't find purpose. You birth it. Purpose can't be found. How are you going to find something that God sent you with? <laughs> Purpose is not found, it's birth. It's in you. Everything has purpose. This mic has what? Purpose. That chair you were sitting in has what? Purpose. You have purpose and you don't find it. You birth it. It's hiding under the spirit of darkness. Today, it breaks. 
Are you hearing what I'm saying? Today it breaks. When the blood flowed out of Jesus' right side rib, it came from the area Eve was taken from the first Adam. So when the soldier cuts him, it is God calling Eve back to a spot. We are that Eve, the church, the bride. Tonight, the blood is going to set you free. Lift your hands in the Holy Ghost. Seek out our Lord, our Seek our number. Seek out our Lord, our Lord. Seek our number. Father, in Jesus' mighty name. Oh, just one moment. I feel the, blood, the presence of the blood coming. Feel the presence of the blood coming. Lift your hands in the Holy Ghost. In the name of the Lord, the mercy. I just saw the spirit of sorrow. Somebody walking in sorrow. I just saw that just got destroyed in Jesus' mighty name. You're going to be filled with joy. Lift your hands, my Lord, see. Lift your hands in the Holy Ghost, Father, in Jesus' name. I now take authority over this altar. And I invite the king that shed the blood to come down and walk amongst those at the altar. Father, I place the blood now. As Moses now took the blood from the altar, I take the blood now and I sprinkle it prophetically over these people. Right now that they may have their own personal experience with the blood to destroy these three demonic spirits. The spirit of form, formless. In Jesus' mighty name, I decree that that void spirit is being lifted. I decree that darkness is coming off of those jewels that you put on the inside of them. And as they make their declaration tonight in Jesus' mighty name, I decree now that the blood will begin to flow. As the blood flows right now, touching, 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 touching right now in Jesus' mighty name, I decree right now that your word say, whom the Son set free is free indeed. And I plead the blood of Jesus now. As I apply the blood right now, at the high, as the high priest, I sprinkle the blood prophetically upon each one right now. I decree that that formless spirit must go, that void spirit must live, that darkness must leave their life in the name of Jesus Christ. And I decree as the blood is falling upon them now that their conscience, their eyes, their ears, their heart, their soul, their feet will now be set free in Jesus' name. So glad, so glad. I want you to repeat after me. Heavenly Father, thank you for Jesus Christ. Jesus, thank you that you are that lamb that was slain before the war was. Tonight, I decree I have legal right through the blood to return to my origin. I receive the same blessing that the Father released over the earth is coming upon me right now. I am free from a formless form. I am free from a voided spirit. I am free from all darkness, and by faith, I receive the blood of Christ that speaks better things than that of Abel. I receive, in Jesus' name, amen, amen, and amen. Come on and give God praise. I've been washed in the blood. In the blood, the blood of the Lamb, so glad, 
for the blood of Jesus. Wow, was that a word of what? My God, my God, because of the blood of Jesus, time cannot take from you what eternity gave to you. Oh, come on, somebody ought to be excited. My Lord, my Lord, my Lord, my Lord. I, I, me and Apostle Sinyanga were just uh, uh, earballing each other when I said, oh my God, because we understood, I, th I mean, the significance of what he was saying. Some of you might catch it next week, but it went right through us. Time is not allowed to stop what eternity already gave you. Oh my God, and the blood is a way to make sure time does not mess with you. Because you came from another world, hallelujah. No one here was born to suffer. That cannot be an eternal plan of God. You know, I, I came, you know, when I came to the Lord, and the Bishop Skybander, I was... In 1989, I was living in Chimwemwe. I was so poor. When, poor. when poor people saw me, they got encouraged. They're like, I thought I was doing bad until I saw him. And yet, in eternity, God knew what the blood, what, what the blood had given me to change the world. I mean, the whole time I'm walking in Chimwemwe in my poverty, God says, boy, if you only know. I don't know who's in the house. I don't know who's in the house. God is about to dump on you what eternity already gave to you. And no witch in Zambia can stop that. Nobody can stop that. I, am, I mean, that was so powerful. Well, put your hands together for Apostle Reed Robertson from Jacksonville for such a powerful word that he has brought to us in the Republic of Zambia. Praise God. Amen. Hallelujah. By the way, his books are here. The, the, the blood, the other voice in the court of heaven is here. And the divine revelation of Jesus Christ is here. So he's got some books here. I'll, I, be, I believe tomorrow we'll give him some time to sign some of his books at the book table if you would like to get some of his books. I hope you do because his books are very, very powerful. Amen. Please take your seat just by a, a, a little bit here. Amen. Before we transition to the next session, which is mine, there's something we need to do. 
Amen. So we're going to keep the live stream going until we shift that thing. Amen. Wow, but what a word. Praise the Lord. Amen. So we're coming. This is just amazing stuff. I'm just so blessed. So blessed. So blessed. Hallelujah. Press him. I didn't say go anywhere. <laughs> Don't dismiss yourself when you work in the water until the water attendant dismisses you. Stay behind me. You're not done at all. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Like I told you, that the Lord spoke to me. He said, I'm sending you home and you need to go and make an investment in your country. Okay? You know, any investment means you're going to be spending money before there comes a return. That's the name of the investment. Is that right? Otherwise, unless you've never invested, some of you just collect paychecks. But if you've ever invested, you understand when you invest, you don't invest for now, you invest for what's coming. Are you catching what I'm saying? And the Lord spoke to me something, Pastor Chalubra. He said to me, Francis, I've made you a king in my kingdom. You have risen in a place in the order. Of, he said to me, you now represent the order of Melchizedek around the world. He said, because I've made you a king, I have got certain, certain mandates I'm going to put on you. He said to me, you can never... Reduce the level of your kingship because of the crowds where you are going. Now, what, what, what does that mean? It means, he said to me, when, wherever you are, whether it's Africa, whether it's America, you have to make an investment in the conferences you do for me that look like a king is putting up a conference for another king. Are you catching what I'm saying? And he said to me, never worry about the money because the money is mine anyway. So when I come to Zambia, it's an investment. Are you catching what I'm saying? Amen. I want to tell you something. I'm about to collect an offering because you need to be able to tap into the grace of what the Lord is releasing on the meeting. You are not going to come and give in a few seconds because Francis Mouse needs your money. Friends, look at this. You see money. Trust me, I'm not looking for an offering in Zambia to pay for that. But, I, but God told me whenever you go anywhere, you have to, you can't come to Zambia and reduce the standard of how you present, you present Jesus because you're among Africans. And when you go to America, you raise the standard and you spend more. So wherever we are, we go out, all of us, because we are representing what? Jesus. But again, in meetings like this, people's lives change radically. There are people who are following me from around the world who told me, we don't understand. Your ministry has given me hope in faith again. Things are happening that I never thought would happen. Men are flying, leaving everything, just coming, flying to the mouth. I'll do it. People flying from Australia, coming to the U.S. just to, to find me in a meeting. This is happening. Uh, sir, the diplomat, where's the diplomat? Where's my son? Stand up, son. You know, he's a diplomat. You know, it's going to be a very important man. I won't tell you where he is. You know, but he flew all the way, left all his government duties with the United Nations and, and, the, and, and the government of Chad. He said, um, Papa, he, you know, he's been following me, sowing into my ministry to the tune of thousands of dollars. And I'm thinking, where is this African apostle? That's why I got, where is this African? When I saw, the first time I saw your offering, I thought to myself, that's what got me. You know, it's not, I said, hey, because I have a hope for Africa that one day we want to just be collectors, we'll be givers. And when I saw that offering come in, Bachelor, I said, mm, this must be wrong. Chad, this. So, and then it happened again. Ah. So one day I picked up the phone. WhatsApp. Thank God for WhatsApp. I love WhatsApp. It's connected the world. I got on WhatsApp. I said, sir, who are you? And why is an African sending a man in America so much money? In thousands of dollars. He says, Papa, you don't understand. I found you on YouTube. And from the first sermon, everything has shifted. Everything I should. And until you should have seen this man dancing like this, because today is the first time he sees me. He left his work at the United Nations with the government of Chad. He's very, I'm, I'm trying to protect him. He's very, very high up there. You know, but he said, how can my father that I've been following be in Africa and I don't put everything aside? He flew in, came here, paid his own way, and then, and then not only did he pay his own way, uh, four days ago, Bachelor, he says, 
Papa, I'm sending you another $1,500 for the conference in Zambia. I said, thank you. I will appreciate it. And then I'm also flying. I have to be there. When he saw me, he said, this is my conference, just to see my father. To meet the man whose ministry has changed everything. He says, your books now are all over, going all over Chad. Politicians have got my books because of him. In Chad, we're looting my books. Now he said, Chad is waiting. When Dr. Mouse is going to come to Chad? Something is happening in Cameroon. When I went to Cameroon, she can tell you thousands of Cameroonians. Dr. Mouse is in Cameroon. They came from everywhere. Douala, Yaounde. Half in Nigeria, the same thing. When I went there. When I met Joshua Selman about two months ago, Joshua told me, Francis, I want to tell you something. I was surprised that Joshua Selman also, I was honored. He listens to me. He said to me, do you know you have the best teaching on the altars in the world? How do you know? Well, I listen to you. Wow. Thank you, because I listen to Joshua every day. But you see, when you meet kingdom men, they are not afraid to tell you they also get something from you. It's these small people who think that, come on somebody. I don't have everything. I need Moses Silva because he's got things I don't have. I need Sandes Nyangwa. He's got things I don't have. I love to be around people like that. I'm saying this to say this. There are angels who have come. I saw them yesterday and God said, these are angels of mobility. Say, God, what do you mean? He says, there's a lot of people who are stuck. Their wheels of destiny are flat tires. He said, I've sent them. And they and things are going to begin to move. That have not been moving. Sit down, sir. That have not been moving in people's lives. Things are going to be moving. So I'm telling you right now. That this is a mo- this is an offering of mobility. As you come to the altar, I'm trying to let you know as a prophet because every altar has a human attendant. I'm the human attendant to this altar for the next three days. And I'm and the altar speaks to the human attendant because the attendant on altar flows into the altar and the altar flows into the attendant. That's the miracle of altars. That's why you can eat an altar and the people who the altar flows into rise against you. Why? Because, but I'm talking to the altar. No, but the altar is connected to the people. It flows in and out. And God said to me today, there is an exchange of mobility. He said to me, Isaiah 66 is available on the altar. Who has heard of such a thing? Can a nation be born in one day? There is, there is a thing called the grace for speed. God today says you need to sow in the grace for speed. Because the truth is some of you are so delayed by your poverty and by your struggle. If God does not give you speed, will bury you with 10% of your assignment done. But the devil is a liar. I said the devil is a liar. I believe God can change it all. He can change it all. So get ready to give an offering to the Lord. To the Lord. To the Lord. To the Lord. And God says, go and invest in Zambia. I met with my board. So what does that mean, Dr. Mouse? I said, it means you're going to be releasing a lot of money into Zambia and not get anything back financially. But that's not where we are going. We are going because the king's business requires us. And the harvest always comes from somewhere. Mordecai told Esther, Esther, if you don't deliver the juice today, be, a, be, be assured of this. God will raise deliverance from somewhere else. So this is how I live my life. I saw whether you give into my ministry or not, I'm not even worried about it. Because God always raises deliverance from somewhere else. Are you catching what I'm saying? And he does what he does. My duty in Zambia is not to worry about the offering. My duty in Zambia is to, at the end of these three days, I want to meet up the altar. I always report back to the Lord when I finish the conference. My wife knows. I go back and I say, Jesus, did I do what you wanted done? 
So it doesn't matter what people say about me. If the Lord said, I'm not happy. You didn't do what I was supposed to do for me. That's what I get out of it. Then he takes off the rest. So this offering is not about a conference that needs your money. It's about an altar that's open because God needs to give you speed. And he wants you to sow into the offering, believing God for supernatural acceleration like you have never known before. That not even the witches next door in your house, not, not even the witches around your compound can stop the speed that's about to hit your life. So with that, I want you to raise your hand, get an offering envelope somewhere. And then, and then while you are doing that, where is Mrs. Mitty? Are you here? Maybe she's, she's here or but she's gone. She's where there. Yeah. Thank you. The what would like to be. On my left. Mrs. Mitty, you know, uh, why don't you come up here? Come up here. I just love this woman. Just come up here. Just come up to my order and just go in. I just love this woman. So kinder minded. So kinder minded. But I woke up. Mrs. Mitty, when did I call you? Just come close. On Tuesday. I called you on Tuesday. I, I called on Tuesday because in the morning while I was praying, the Lord came to me. And he said to me, Francis, I said, yes. He said, I know you raised the money for the conference in the USA to do what you have, I'm calling you to do here. I said, I know. You know, and one of the reasons I do it is because in Africa we have a spirit where if Bonky or Benin came here and raised money, you'll be giving like crazy. If another African comes here, hey, hey, pastors, he's coming for our people. And, he, and the problem, there are people they are talking about don't even have money. Oh, hey, he's coming after people to, to get their money. So you know, I told my people, I, I want to know what everything is going to cost me. I'll raise it before I come. So I want to tell you something. Everything here is paid. Paid. I owe no debt when it's done. I'm under no pressure to manipulate you. I will not, I'm not one of those prophets who come up with a, with, a, with a crazy story to make you give me 500 kwacha. If you give me 500 kwacha, I see 500 angels coming into your house. So every angel is looking for one kwacha. Really? Angels are looking for one kwacha. 500 angels will come to your house as you give 500 kwacha. Are the angels that cheap? Hey, these African angels, no wonder we are poor. If our angels can work for one kwacha, maybe the ones who work, who work for big money in the U.S., because our angels for 500 quarters, 500 angels will come and show up. So impressed because you gave God 500 quarters. That's not Francis Miles. Devil is alive. So I find out what it's going to cost me. I meet with my guys. I have business kings. I raise business kings. Because my anointing makes people millionaires. Oh, yes, it does. In America, you should see some of my sons. Where they, oh my God, you should see them. Okay? So. I say, okay, well, how much is going to need it? Bam, 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 okay. And sometimes I just make a couple of calls. Five sons, ten sons, you need to do this. Oh, yeah, it's done. Or the ministry itself does it. My point is this. I came on the Republic of Zambia with this conference completely paid for. So this offering is not because I want to raise money from you. And then tomorrow when you see me with the different shoe I came with, you think, ah, maybe it's what I gave last night. Ah, that shoe looks amazing. No, God has sent me for my people. Because if what I'm carrying is changing Nigeria, has changed Nigeria, different nations, America, I hope it can change my own country because I love our people. So, I woke up on Tuesday and the Lord said to me, I know your budget is, is done, but I want to speak to something on your budget. And, but you know why he pointed to the car rentals because we have got VIP cars for all our guests. And it costs about 26 to maybe 30,000 kwacha. Maybe 25. Uh, I don't know. I think it was 26. So it's really minute compared to the other big items. But the Lord is, is different from man. God is not a man. 
He said to me, that 25,000 kwacha cannot be paid for by the U.S. I said, why? He said, Francis, the angels who have come with you this time have never come to Zambia with you before. They are angels of mobility. And those cars, when they are driving your speakers around, represent mobility. He said to me, I want you, and he gave me her name, Promises Mickey. Tell her that if she will hear the word of the Lord, have her talk to her five Zambian people who live in Zambia, five Zambians, who are going to give you no less than 5,000 kwacha to pay for that budget item. And he said, here's why. He says, because I am going to bless those five business kings in 2023 like they have never seen before. And he said to me, before you leave for America, you need to meet with those people and release a blessing and I'll tell you what to say over them. And that 2023, everything, will, I don't care what level they are on. Now, tell me the, the, what the dreams you are having about that same issue before I called you. Thank you so much, man of God. Uh, in October, uh, a friend of mine, a pastor, came, uh, we were having fellowship. And she tells me, she says, I saw you and your family standing around a very big car, a white car. So I said, what about the vehicle? She says, no, that's what I was dreaming. Anyway, it's about movement. So I said, what movement? She says, no, just pray. So I said, ah, anyway, let me, I'll pray. That was in October. And three weeks ago, I visited another couple, a friend of mine, when I just came from Israel. So I brought them a few things. And as we were having fellowship, the husband is a bishop, the wife is a reverend. She tells me, I saw you with your husband and your children around a very big car, a white car. So I said, oh, thank you. And when I went home, I think I became a bit, I said, Lord, I think what's this vehicle all about? That I'm being seen in this vehicle, that's, that's just there. It's not moving. And I'm asking God, I said, what's this vehicle? So for three weeks, I think I even stopped asking God. And then he calls me in the morning. He's telling me about vehicles that are moving up and down. And I said, Lord, from October, you told me about these vehicles. Then three weeks ago, another friend of mine in Bonaventure, McKinney, uh, uh, Bishop Simpukele, tells me about a vehicle. And then when I came home, I tell my husband, I said, look, this vehicle has appeared again. We're having dinner. I said, this vehicle has happened. Uh, he, he saw us in the, this vehicle. And my husband was just now looking at me about this vehicle. <laughs> so I thank God when he called me. I said, Lord, I thank you that this revelation has been unveiled. It's about angels moving, this mobility. And I said, man of God, you are spot on. I thank God that you have given me the revelation to this vehicle from last year, October. That I've been asking and I'm saying, what is this vehicle? What is this vehicle? So when he told me, it just confirmed what the Lord had been showing me from last year. I'm really humbled. Thank you so much, man. And as soon as I told her, she ran to the bank and put a deposit. She said, I'm going to be number one. And then, and then he went, where's Jeffrey? Pastor Jeffrey heard it. He said, I'm, I may be Zimbabwean, but now I live in Zambia, so I can claim I, I don't want those. So he said, I'm jumping on that thing. So there's only, and here's what the Lord said to me. He says, I told you five. So there's three spots left. So if you want to be one of those business kings, I'm going to pray for before I leave America. I'll meet you at my office. I just got a new office in Kablonga that I can meet people at. If you want, be, I'm going to be on all, among those three people. And I hope you are Zambian. Because God wants to do something with these people. I think it's time for Zambians to begin to have millionaires, billionaires. No, it's not just Nigeria. Not about, I just want, I believe something God wants to do. If you're one of those three people, don't come, just see Mrs. Mitty, 
Because once we get to five, I told a certain session, God told me, once you get to five, the door is closed. Don't get money from number six. I said five. So if you're one of those three people, you say, I want to jump on this blessing. You go to her, and then by the, you know, by the time we go to her, once I, I have five, I will not accept number six because this is not a gimmick to raise money. This is God saying five. When God says five, you don't do six. That's what I've learned about the Lord. Well, otherwise, you could lose everything on the number six because God said, what did you do? I told you five and you did six. It's fine. But for the rest of you, there's a grace for speed. So get your offering and ready. The choir is already going to sing a song. And then they're going to bring the offering here. They're going to bring the offering. Yeah, they're going to collect the offering. I mean, I, I mean, I think, you know, because of the way this is, ushers, you can come and stand with the offering basket here. I want people to walk to the altar. The altar is hot. There is a grace for speed here. I'm telling you, God can crush 20 years of grace into three years. God can do it. It can collapse time. And people say, how, where did you come from? How has your rising been so fast? You are struggling. How can you be struggling last year and now this year you are flying to Dubai? You are flying to Dubai. Is it, that's what God can do. So, guys, the altar is open. You can come and give to the Lord. If He's speaking to you or if you feel this is God, come. The altar is open as we give our first courts of offering. Those that are online watching me from America and around the world, you can give for the grace for supernatural speed in your life as well. We have people from Australia, we have people from the US, we have people from UK, we have people from, from South Africa uh, and Kenya that are watching us. Guys, get on this. The, in, on the live stream, they are showing you the different ways you can give online by the Spirit of God. Before we go off the air for a few minutes, we're going to end this live stream. You know, for those that are online, but don't go anywhere. I'll be coming right after that with a new live stream where I'll be preaching the last message for the night. But if you are online, don't miss this grace for speed. The altar is mobile. It comes to you in Jesus' name. May there be speed in your life in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Amen. Oh, dear. 